Right, so the breaking news today has been on Matt Hancock, a big story dropped by the Tory graph, it must be noted. The paper that defends the Tories above and beyond anyone else as a rule, as they claim they've got some 10,000 WhatsApp messages, amongst which it has been revealed that one of the most tragic and avoidable aspects, both in terms of loss of life and in community spread of COVID, the infections and deaths in care homes at the very start of the pandemic and rolling on during the height of it, in fact, were actually avoidable. Just a month into the pandemic, back in April of 2020, cast your minds back, the Chief Medical Officer, Chris Whitty, we all remember him from the pandemic evening reports flanking Bozo, don't we, told Hancock that all residents going into English care homes should be tested for COVID before doing so. Hancock initially accepted this advice. It's common sense, isn't it? It's come from the educated man, the Chief Medical Officer. Surely we would all accept that. In one WhatsApp message to his team, he said, Chris Whitty has done an evidence review and now recommends testing of all going into care homes and segregation whilst awaiting results. This is obviously a good positive step and we must put it to in the dock, meaning the COVID adult social care plan document, which was a remedial measure implemented to fix some of the balls ups the government's had already made for itself just one month into the pandemic, pretending we could take it on the chin and what resulted from that that kind of thing. This was an obvious measure to take, according to Hancock, and so it would seem to any of us uh, who still have our marbles, frankly. But by the end of the day, though, Hancock had changed his mind. A WhatsApp message from one of his aides to Hancock that evening read, just to check, officials are saying your steer is to remove the commitment to testing on admission to care homes from the community, but keep commitment to testing on admission to care homes from hospital. Is that right? The same aide, upon getting no response from Hancock, then later WhatsApped, update. We can say in the doc that it's our ambition to test everyone going into a care home from the community where care homes want. In the coming weeks is the suggested time frame I've been told. The aide clearly thought it beneficial to not drop this commitment, and it seems a pretty obvious line of rational thinking to take, but Hancock's eventual response was none of these. Hancock replied, tell me if I'm wrong, if only he had, though if he had... <laughs> did it make any difference but i would rather leave it out and just commit to test and isolate all going into care from hospital i do not think the community commitment adds anything and it muddies the waters he thought it muddied the waters strange turn of phrase really it was quite black and white surely we'd already seen the pandemic roll across asia and europe towards us from china with all the infection and deaths it left in its wake and somehow taking what seems a sensible precaution one he'd already that day said was obvious knowing already as we did that the elderly were most susceptible to the worst aspects of any illness let alone this one to just test people going into care homes from hospitals hancock didn't think so. The chief medical officer did, but Hancock didn't, and he was the minister. I know he's widely regarded as somewhat thick. He once visited the local hospital where my sister works and asked her what she was doing when she was doing the washing up in the kitchen. But it seems evident he was also stupid enough to ignore the advice from the chief medical officer, and therefore the buck for his actions following this advice, following what came to pass in care homes, must now stop with him. Hancock decided that only residents leaving hospital should require testing before entering a care home. But of course, so many go into care homes from the community, and these were completely ignored by him as far as testing went at that point. This advice was eventually changed, but not until August of 2020, when COVID was very much here, very much running rampant across the country, not least in care homes. Almost 18,000 people died in care homes between April and August of 2020. How many of those could have been prevented had Hancock listened to the chief medical officer, had done his job properly? Had he listened to professional advice instead of ignoring it? Between the outbreak in 2020 and 2022, 40,000 people died in care homes from COVID-19. And as case rates rose in 2021, Hancock went on record as saying infections in care homes were mainly being driven by infections coming from the community, not hospitals. He admitted this a year after ignoring advice to prevent this, not admitting that bit, of course, but has never publicly acknowledged it since either, not until these WhatsApp messages got leaked to the Tory graph. They have barely touched the bulk of the messages in their possession, apparently some 2.3 million words worth. They're going to be releasing stories on this for some time, I'm guessing, perhaps, if it is in their interest to do so. Tory supporters, as they inherently are. But as far as care homes go, not only did Hancock appear to play fast and loose with the lives of the elderly, he did so to meet targets on testing too. 
More messages released imply that Hancock's self-imposed target of 100,000 tests a day included the counting of a large number of tests he knew would never end up being processed. And he also wanted to limit the amount of testing going on in care homes, bearing in mind he announced this target at the same time he decided testing wasn't necessary in care homes for people coming from the community. This was April 2020 again. So what's his decision regarding muddying the waters? More about ensuring he hit his own self-imposed testing targets instead. Did numbers and good press matter more than lives to Matt Hancock? Because looking at this, it absolutely seems so. This is a guy who loves the public life, after all. His book that he hoped would launch him as a celebrity that flopped. His Jungle Jim impression on I'm a celeb when he should have been doing the day job he was elected to. He desperately wants people to like him. And it would seem in his efforts to become some kind of a big beast in his party, he cut corners and cost people their lives as health secretary. And this needs to be investigated now to see if that is the case, because it strikes me as criminal negligence if it is. People died. If his actions led to that, something needs to be done. How about you? What do you think? Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do hit like and subscribe, leave a comment and hit the notification bell too, so you don't miss the next one. Also look out for me on social media and other interesting stuff by clicking in the Linktree link in the comments below, and I'll see you next time. Cheers, folks.